morning. Today, I don't even know what today is. Today is Saturday, May something. What is it? Uh, 13th? 13th. 2023. We're going to do something a little bit different that we haven't done on the channel before. We're going to drive to the north end of Myrtle Beach and then come down 17. Probably take a couple little detours, show you some of the stuff along the way. This is a video for people who maybe don't live here yet or thinking about moving here, kind of how is it, how's Myrtle Beach laid out, because it's a, it's a large area. So we'll start at North Myrtle Beach, come down through Myrtle Beach and Surfside and Garden City and Myrtle's Inlet and maybe down to Litchfield and Pauley's Island, we'll see how it goes. Make a couple pit stops along the way. And uh, maybe at some point I'm going to throw the golf clubs <coughs> in the front of the truck. Maybe we'll stop at some point and hit some balls. Maybe sneak a range test in here as well. All right. All right, so let's see. Let's build a little range test in. If anybody follows this, we did a range test a week or so ago driving out to Columbia, me and a couple of people from work, and we didn't get the range that I expected. But So let's see what we get today. Let's reset one of the trip meters. Let's call it trip two. to reset trip two. Okay, so we are starting now. Mason, try to remember this. 252 miles of range. 18,795 miles on the odometer. So we'll take how many miles we actually drive today, compare that to the starting range of 252 and see if we beat that or not. All right, off we go. So we're gonna we're in we're, we live on the south side, Myrtle Beach. It is hot in here. Let's turn that down a little bit. There we go. And we're gonna drive up to North Myrtle Beach. I think where Route Nine probably comes right in to North Myrtle Beach, and then we'll start coming south and take some detours from that. Okay, so we're gonna get on Route Thirty One, and we'll show you that in a minute. That'll be our first little little snippet. First stop we got to clean the truck here at Scrubby's. Scrubbies. This is the first thing to see down here. There's a lot of construction going on. There's a lot of new housing going up. I'm not sure if it's still true, but last year, or maybe the year before I'd heard, we were, Horry County was either the first or second fastest growing county in the country. So you do see a lot of construction. So one of the best kept secrets, I guess, for getting around down here is Route 31. And I say that, it's not a secret to anybody, but it seems like there's not a lot of traffic on it at any time. This is kind of a vacation or bypass road. This gets you from the south side all the way up to the north side. No red lights, no traffic. So we're going we're gonna to drive the entire route of it. 31 north, this is the south terminus point of it where it dumps here into 707 and so we're going to get on here and we're going to take it all the way up to North Myrtle Beach we're going to bypass all of the tourist traffic the vacation traffic which is to our right to the east so I'm not going to keep the camera on the entire time but I just I do just want to give you an idea of what it looks like if you're trying to get around down here you're down for just the week or you're moving to the area and you're trying to figure out how to get around some of the traffic, this might sol solve your problems, partially. So over here on the left is where we're going to have a beautiful new hospital in a couple of years. So 
mile 28, so I guess it's 28 miles long. And this is it. So this will take you from the south side down here by Surfside Beach where we got on. Surfside, Sockesty area, all the way up past Myrtle Beach and past North Myrtle Beach really, right at the top. That's where we're going to go and we're going to start there and we're going to start driving down south. But three open lanes the entire way if you're trying to get from the south side to the north side or the other way around and you want to do it quickly and not sit at all the red lights look for a way to get on 31 there's the intercoastal waterway down there See where they took down some trees here, putting in new houses here on the right. So this is, we're coming up on Route 544. We're going to intersect, we're going to go over 544. And that's one of the main roads that brings people in down to some of the big campgrounds in Surfside Beach area. 544 gets to be, 544 gets to be a very busy road. A lot of restaurants on that. There's a Target, Walmart, Chick-fil-A. Hachia Japanese Express, which is really good. Uh, what other restaurants are there? There's a bunch of stuff. Walk-Ons is there. Burger Fi. Uh, Moe's, which is kind of like Chipotle. So 544. Uh, so that's 544 towards Surfside Beach. If, east. If you take 544 west, it goes towards Conway up towards Coastal Carolina University. So lots of stuff from 544, that's what we just crossed over. One other thing I wanted to show you, for anybody with a Ford Blue Cruise vehicle like this, like the Lightning or the Mach-E or anything else that might have Blue Cruise, Route 31, <laughs> watch the road. Route 31, I am watching the road, but the phone was in the way. Route 31 is a hands-free road. So you can be foot off the pedals, hands off the steering wheel, adaptive cruise control, you set your speed, it'll keep the distance behind the vehicle in front of you, if there was, if there is one in front of you, or you can just set the speed and it'll just take you up, keep you right in the middle of the lane. If the speed, see what it does, here's where it's getting me, I got to keep the, I have to keep the camera down a little bit, or I can hold it up here. There are two visual sensors here, one here one over there, or is it right there, that watch your eyes. And if it thinks you're not watching the road, it'll tell you to watch the road. So I am watching the road because I'm looking over the camera and we're perfectly safe. But if it thinks you're not, it'll ding you. It'll say watch the road. Even if I pick the cup up sometimes and I'm drinking from a big cup, if the cup blocks the line of sight between that sensor and my eyes, tell me to watch the road even though I am so it's a little finicky but it's a, a finicky on the safe side so I think that's okay so we're also about to cross over route 501 here 501 north goes towards Conway uh, Aner, Gallivan's Ferry Marion and out towards 95 501 south you can see which is the right exit here is takes you down to Myrtle Beach and it comes out right by coastal Coastal Grand Mall is right down here. A bunch of car dealerships, more restaurants. Near Broadway at the beach. Can you get over that Jersey wall? Show that, there you go. So that's, a, that's the main artery, the main road into Myrtle Beach. Saturdays and Sundays can be a bit of a nightmare with all the traffic coming in and going out. Workday mornings, it gets tough. A lot of people coming and going, you know, during rush hour times, it gets busy. So 501 is the big, the big artery in it. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a little bit of heads up there. And we're going to continue on our journey up 31, up to the north end of Myrtle Beach. Still on Route 31, I wasn't sure if Mason hit record yet or not. So we're coming up on International Drive. So this is the other side of Carolina Forest. Carolina Forest, huge uh, area of housing developments, 
stretches from 501, which we passed a minute ago, then on the north north side of that, uh, you can just drive through Carolina Forest, and there's got to be 15, yeah, I'm guesstimating, housing developments. And on the other side, you get International Drive here, where again, they have some more restaurants and shops and stuff like that. Huge high school in Carolina Forest. So we're making our way north on 31. All right, welcome back to 31, just a little bit further north. We're coming up on the exit for Route 22, the intersection for 22. Now, 22 is a good road, big main road. Takes you right in by the Tanger Outlets in North Myrtle Beach. So it's kind of, I guess, the south end of North Myrtle Beach. So we're going to see that in just a second. So if you wanted to go to the outlets, 31 to 22 will get you there pretty efficiently. You know, or if you're if you don't want to take 31 and you're out on 17 business 17 business is the main kind of the main road through Myrtle Beach from the north side to the south side we're gonna spend a lot of time on that today showing you the, kind of the north to south trip what that looks like but I just want to give you the ideas as we're driving around give you an idea of where some of the stops are you know, maybe where to go and how to get there So North Myrtle Beach 22 East this big interchange again you can see there's still not a lot of traffic here it's a Saturday morning at 11 46 a.m. beautiful weekend 82 degrees great way to get around there is over on the left I don't know Mason if you can see this no, not here. Yeah. all right Hang in there, you're doing great. This is a great time to click like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified when we upload new videos. We are trying to grow the channel. We have 1,100 subscribers now. To me, that's a big deal. I appreciate you being here and watching. And I think we're gonna do more videos like this coming up to give, because we have so many people thinking about moving to the area. I have a friend of a friend who contacted you know, me recently and you know, looking for asking questions about hospitals and where to work because I work at, a, at Tideland's Health at a hospital system. So you know, we want to give people an idea of where things are and where the different housing communities are and where the different you know, touristy things are. Because you move here, you're going to do some of the touristy and the vacation stuff. That's part of the benefit of living here. You get to do that stuff whenever you want. But maybe also you might want to avoid some of that stuff on the weekend. So as we move through the today, there's a, which golf course is this? Uh, we have something, I think, close to 90 golf courses. Was the, I heard it was 80-something was the, the last number I heard last year. We'll try to point some of those out. I'm not sure if we have more miniature golf courses or more full-size golf courses. That's how many we actually have. Quite a few up here at the north end as well, and a lot down by the south end by where we live. So. If you like golf, you gotta. Even if you don't like golf and you move here, you probably gotta buy yourself some golf clubs and learn how to play, because it's one of the big things to do. Golf Town USA. We did just get approved for our first ever Myrtle Beach's first ever PGA Tour event. It will be called the Myrtle Beach Classic, and that'll be coming here next year in 2024. I don't remember the exact dates, but you can look it up online. Now, I believe it's going to be one of these PGA weeks where some of the premier people are at a different event, and then we get everybody else. It's supposed to be a full field, 150-ish you know, people or so, normal Thursday through Sunday PGA Tour layout. But I guess a couple times during the, during the season next year, and I think they started it this year as well, they have like a, a higher level event the same weekend. So I'm curious to see how that plays out, but either way, I'm excited that we're getting a PGA event. Definitely be going to that next year. I have never been to one, but I think the atmosphere looks fun. It looks like a great day to walk around and enjoy watching some of the best players in the world play. So we'll bring you more information on that as we get it. So what I did, we got off 31, right where 
the north terminus point of it for Route 9 here. It came up. This is just going to be, I was trying to get a good starting point. So you can see we have this Liberty gas station with the Bojangles on the right. On the left, we have Bell & Bell Buick GMC. So this is a big area for people coming in from the north. A lot of times people will come straight down 95 to 501, which we showed you a few minutes ago. But the other alternative is you can get off 95 a little further north. I think it's closer to Fayetteville, North Carolina. And you can weave yourself down through and you'll end up coming in here on this Route 9. So 9's a good road. Several go We played a golf course here last year. Oh, what was the name of that one? Farther north. Lots of great golf courses right here. Big area for that. But anyway, we're going to make a left here on 9, and that'll dump us into North Myrtle Beach on 17, and that's really where we are going to start our trip. We'll probably, we're just going to try to record the entire way. We're going to stop somewhere for lunch, so we'll pause the video for that. And my goal is to also drive through Barefoot Landing to show you what's there. Drive down and show you some of the nicer homes on the kind of in cent central Myrtle Beach area, which just a little north of where the Sky Wheel is. Drive down, show you the Sky Wheel area where Ripley's is. And that's kind of the a big vacation or touristy area where all of the sand volleyball courts are. So we'll take a look at that. And then we'll continue south from there, get back on Business 17, somewhere around the, right by the airport and the Market Common area, make a left, continue going down get into southern side of Myrtle Beach, Surfside, Garden City, Myrtle's Inlet, maybe down to Litchfield and Pauly's Island. We'll see how it goes. We'll hit some of the highlights along the way. It's going to be a long video. Buckle up um, and hope you learned something from this and kind of how our area of Myrtle Beach is laid out. We moved here from Maryland a little over three years ago. We used to go to Ocean City all the time in Maryland some of the beaches in Delaware. That was much more compact, right? Ocean City's like nine miles, I think it is, long. And we came down here, and it's much more spread out. Lots of room um, for people to come in, and you know, you're not on top of each other all the time. The closest thing we have to a, a tourist, a, a boardwalk area, I'm watching this guy in his town car, he's already, oh, he's gonna hit us for a second. Um, the closest thing we have to a boardwalk area, I guess, is the Broadway at the beach area down in Myrtle Beach. So we're going to get into that. I do have other videos posted from Broadway at the beach. So please click back on the channel and you can find some of those. A great area to go walk around. Lots, lots to do there. So here we go. We're on 9. Headed south. I'm going to try not to talk the entire way once we're kind of really doing this. But I will point out some of the things we like along the way. I think it's potentially interesting to you. So we're going to bypass the, this again, this is the northern terminus point of 31. Go past this, right down to 17. We are right by North Myrtle Beach High School here. Remember that's on the right, right down here. We have signs here for the Little River Blue Crab Festival, which is coming up. And we've we've gone to that before. It's okay, it's packed. It's packed. May 20th and 21st, lots of people there. I, being from Maryland, expected to be able to sit down and have some steamed crabs and that is not the case. Uh, there was one stand that was selling a couple crabs and they give you these unseasoned crabs. There was two of them in a little styrofoam bowl that you could get. Like, that's not quite right. But other than that, yeah, it's nice to go walk around, I guess. You get all, all the festival stuff and people selling the things that they make and everything that you're trying to resell. So you have all that and all the normal festival food stands. <coughs> 
and the two times we went, we found it to be so crowded that you really couldn't get to the stand and it wasn't as enjoyable. So, but anyway, there it is. There's the sign, Mason World Famous Blue Crab Festival, Little River Waterfront, May 20th and 21st. So that's where we are, Little River, South Carolina, Little River Band. Seventeen North, so that'll take you up to Wilmington, North Carolina, which is, all, which is a great area. We posted a video on that, I think, a year or so ago. Here we have a <coughs> emergency department hospital here for McLeod that they operate here in Little River Sea Coast. On the right, on the left, got some more houses back here on the left. Bridgewater, it says. Over here on the left also, we have a Tideland's Health Rehab facility. Lots of need for facilities like that down here. I'll try to point out some of the new housing developments as we go through. Just coming up 31, there were a lot of new housing developments that we weren't able to show, but they go fast. Lots of people moving in. We're getting on 17 South. There's a couple motorcycles. I believe this is the first weekend of Bike Week. I think Bike Week spans this weekend, next week, and next weekend. The I, I think that's correct. I guess I should probably have double-checked that before we started recording, but we'll see. If we see a huge amount of motorcycles, then I guess that'll be verification for that. over the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway. See if you can show to the left. Get the camera up. Very pretty. Coming into Cherry Grove Beach. area a fair amount we get this a little further south of here is where we're going to see guitar centers on the left so mason there's barbecue house so mason's got a quandary here he loves the chicken tenders at barbecue house which is on the right see it you're looking at it because you're recording it do you want to go there or are you still sticking with Lido's, which is farther south Lido's. Lido's. he loved the Lido's in maryland and in white marsh in the White Marsh area before we moved down here. So he wants to go to Lido's today. So I guess that's his payment for being videographer today. I, also here, there's a shopping center on the left. I mentioned that's where Guitar Center is that we frequently go to. And if you need any musical stuff, I highly recommend going to see Nick at Guitar Center. He does a great job. I bought my Manhattan Midnight Blue Les Paul Studio from him, a Fender Deluxe Blues Deluxe reissue amplifier tweed cover awesome from him also in the shopping center on the left we bought Mason's Christmas present his is a Mexican made Fender player Stratocaster white on white from there also on the right here we see Rio's Brazilian Steakhouse show Rio's over here on the right they open at four 
We really like Rio's. Rio's has the best, this is a big statement because I've eaten a lot of steaks, <laughs> but Rio's has the best filet mignon I've ever had. They really do. It is fantastic. Here's the guitar center on the left over there. This big shopping center. What else is in there? Home Goods. Uh, it's a Beals outlet. There's a Hobby Lobby in there. So lots of stuff up here. Five Guys. On the right, another restaurant. What is this? Local bar and kitchen on the water. So this is where you start getting to anything you want to eat. I mean, anything you want to eat is here. <laughs> Just... Pick the nationality or the culture of the food and you can find it. Mellow Mushrooms here on the right. Carabas is on the right. And we're just going to start going south and you're going to see them all. And they all get packed. And I think one of the things that happens is we get such an influx of people during the summer. And it takes so many people to staff these restaurants. That what I think happens is you'll occasionally hear people say, well, the restaurants don't have enough staff because people don't want to work. And that's... That's not it. It's just there are so many restaurants. I think we have trouble staffing them all just because of the pe there's more people vacationing than who would live here. So <clears throat> be prepared for long waits sometimes at some of the restaurants. Plan ahead if you come down here, especially on the weekends and the evenings. You're going to have to make reservations typically. Mayday Golf, Sonic, IHOP. No shortage of House of Pancake type breakfast restaurants as well. Is this where Lido's is? I think it's in here. Yeah. Gator Hole Plaza. We have a Walmart, Home Depot, Buffalo Wild Wings. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is always busy. We have a bunch of Chick-fil-A's. You can get your Polynesian sauce pretty much anywhere you want along the beach. No shortage of that. They're typically busy a lot too, but Chick-fil-A does a great job moving people through. So I have 73,000 Chick-fil-A points, so apparently I eat there too much. of different themed weeks. There's a Mustang GT next to us. We have Mustang Week. That's a pretty good one. We have a lot of auto shows. <clears throat> a month or so ago, we had a big Run to the Sun auto show. We got to see a friend of ours that we used to work with at Shock Trauma in Baltimore. That's right. At the Run to the Sun car show. That's a really big one. So lots of cool stuff like that happens down here and living here I don't look it all up we just kind of run into some of it sometimes we also get a lot of well, we'll see Mason's telling me I'm turning at the wrong intersection here to go to Lido's well we'll just find something here no there's Gino's New York style pizzeria you want to do that no Buffalo Wild Wings? No. Firehouse Subs? Definitely not. Rita's Italian Ice? No. Fridays? God, no. El Cerro? No. There's an El Cerro Mexican restaurant in here. You'll see a lot of El Cerros around. If you like Mexican food, they're good. Arby's? I was just looking around, and these are the ones I just see line of sight from where we're currently sitting.
one thing we could use at some of the Walmarts down here are some Electrify America electric vehicle charging stations. I live here, so I charge primarily at home, well, pretty much exclusively at home here, but we get a lot of, I see a lot of Volkswagen ID4s, a lot of Mustang Mach-E's, Volts, Chevy Volts, um, a lot of different electric vehicles, ton of Teslas. We don't have a lot of charging stations for people coming in, visiting us that have electric vehicles, unless you're a Tesla. Tesla has a super station at the Coastal Grand Mall, which we'll drive by in a bit, which is a little bit south of here. So they do fine, and that supercharger is super convenient. It's right near where 501 dumps into the beach. Always uh, busy, but there's always open slots. I've never seen a line. We go to the mall fairly often, so I always sort of check on it. So the Tesla supercharger station's doing well, but we could use Electrify America, if you're listening, we could use a couple Electrify America stations down here. I think at a Walmart here on the north end, and then maybe Walmart down in Garden City, Surfside area, or maybe the one on 544, you know, anywhere down there. I think we'd do a ton of business. If you're thinking about moving down here, well, why don't we have a pause here for a minute? If you're thinking about moving down here from somewhere else, or even if you're just coming for vacation and maybe haven't been here before, leave some information in the comments. Where are you coming from? What attracts you to come in here to Myrtle Beach, either to live or to vacation? I love it. You know, obviously we moved here. What I like is less winter. It's not, so when we got down here, I had a lot of people say, well, so it's probably so much hotter here than it was in Maryland where we moved from. And that's not it, and it's not hotter, and it's not more humid, it's just longer. We have less, maybe it's better to say we have less winter. We get down you know, end of January, February, maybe it gets lower 30s, into the lower 20s, you know, we'll get that, I guess, for a couple weeks sporadically here and there. But then also January and February, we'll have days where it's in the 50s and 60s. So. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes right after, week after Christmas, when we looked, right before we moved here, we went down to the Marsh Walk, Marsh Walk in Burles Inlet. And December 26th, the day after Christmas, we sat out back at Creek Rats. It was 71, 72 degrees in shorts and t-shirts and had lunch. And you can do that. And then, you know, some days it's going to be cold. You're going to get that. But some days it's warm. I, I don't... I haven't taken my heavy coat out of the closet in over three years since we moved here. The light jacket's about all I ever need. The flip side of that is I do miss the snow. We did get last, not this past winter, but the one before. We had one morning where I think we got about half an inch of snow. We ran down to the beach and made a little video of that in Garden City. That's on here on the channel somewhere. And I do miss the snow. I wish we could have like two, two and a half weeks of 20 degrees, snowstorms, 18 inches of snow. I think that would be fine. <laughs> and back to back to spring. But anyway, the weather's the weather's typically nice. Blue skies all year. There's no, you, know, you don't go through three months of gray skies. A lot of the trees stay green all year. You know, it's. You don't drive around and everything's just brown and dormant as far as the trees go. You get a lot of trees that stay, stay green. Is this it? Lido Pizza. Okay. So we'll go up here and we'll turn it. So next shop, so what do we have? We have a cookout on the right. We're gonna make a left in here. So you can see, when, when we entered Vacation Town, I consider this Route 17, I consider this Vacation Town. You get off of this, a block to the right, and you get more into, and this is just north to south the whole way. I think you get more into residential areas, but as soon as you hit 17, it's, you're in Vacation Town. shopping center down. We're going to go in here, give Mason his Lido's, his payment for being the videographer. 
videographer. I'm not sure which is correct. We had a uh, Home Depot up there. We have a Lowe's here. Are you sure this is what you want to do for lunch? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Hang tight. We're going to pause here for just a minute. And when we come out of lunch, we'll restart the video, continue our journey south. Remember, Lido Pizza is square because at Lido Pizza, they never cut corners. Isn't that the tagline? I remember that during watching the Orioles games all the time because they were a big sponsor of the baseball games. I just remember, remember them always saying that. Here we go. Is it open? Yeah. Open. All right. All right. Well, we'll see you in a few seconds. All right, well, we had our Lido's pizza. Mason had his 14 inch square cheese. I had a, the lasagna. Lasagna was pretty good. So here we go, we're pulling back out on the 17, 17 South towards Myrtle Beach. And we're just gonna continue our drive south and hit some of the highlights along the way. Some of the things I think you might like if you're coming to the area. See how we do? Burger Fi on the left. I like Burger Fi. We have Burger Fi, Five Guys, Cookout. I think Burger Fi is probably the best burger. I think, I don't know. Let me know what you think. his best move trying to do this. He's gonna get end up getting clipped. There's way too much. There's way too much traffic. This is a very poor decision. Oh my god. <clears throat> Don't do that. Okay, that's your takeaway from today. Don't do that. Bonefish Grill. I like Bonefish. We have a couple Bonefish Grills. Mutiny Bay Golf Course on the left. I've played there. It's one of the few golf, miniature golf courses I've actually played. Hold it with your hands so you can turn it. I will. You gotta hold it steady. You can't go up and down with it. He hooked the phone up to a little tripod, using it as like a little monopod just to hold it steady, but we gotta work on holding it steady, not going up and down so much. And show what's on the sides to people as well. Oh, I forgot to look up if this was bike week, but I think it is. There's, we're seeing quite a bit, quite a few motorcycles. It is. Waffle House, one of the 1700 Waffle Houses we have. do have this standalone emergency department over here, North Strand ER, run by Grand Strand. Several pawn shops. One of several we have.
PGA Superstore on the right. We have two of those. There's one here. I don't know if you caught it in the side there. And there's another one further south by Broadway at the beach. There's also Golf Galaxy, which is located with the Dick's Sporting Goods at Coastal Grand Mall as well. this up here on the right. Sugar Life. Sugar Life is where we went about but didn't buy, but saw the lollipops that have the live scorpion inside of them. Not live, dead. <laughs> but it was a scorpion and a lollipop. problem with the radios playing in the background if there's music if the different music producers search YouTube and videos that are being uploaded loaded and if they hear their songs the music that they're publish playing in the video they can do a couple different things one they can completely block your video I had that happen last week I recorded a video we went to a March of Dimes event at Broadway at the Beach and then we were walking around Broadway at the Beach and I got two of these from, two different, from the same company but for two different artists one I wasn't sure what it was the other one was from the Eagles and they blocked the video completely blocked it so it's not even viewable right now on YouTube here's the Harley Davidson store look at all the bikers here and all the bikes They bring them all up here from the south side. So the other thing they can do is demonetize your video or take the money that you would make off your video. They would take it. And I just don't like that. I mean, if you're if that's incidental, you're just driving around or walking around, and there's music playing in the background. I can't control that. But anyway, that's what happens. So we have to be careful when we're recording things that we don't have music playing in the background, so they don't cause those headaches. Where are we? Uh, House of Blues is on the right. We're coming up. This is the barefoot landing area. You get that in there? You get a lot of the A pillar in there. So House of Blues is where Mason and I went a couple weeks ago, a month ago maybe, and saw Eric Johnson play. That was fantastic. We have Alligator Adventure right here at the corner. We made a video on that a year or so ago. We went there with my father, I remember. And walking through Alligator Adventure it was better than I thought it was going to be. I liked it. Excuse me. What I'm going to attempt to do here is get over in the right lane and do a quick drive through of Barefoot Landing. Super fast drive through. We'll see. See if I can get over three lanes of traffic here. Maxima. 
Duplin Winery. That gets a lot of a lot of business. A lot of people come up to Duplin Winery. I guess that's how you pronounce it. So here we go. Thunderstruck, America's ACDC tribute. I'm not a big tribute fan. I'd rather see the real band. But. All right, so we're going to make a right here in the barefoot landing. And if I remember right, I believe this is one of the epicenters for Bike Week. They usually have festival stuff set up here. So let's see if that's the case. So you can see on the right, or on the left, this is the left thing. Lots of stuff to walk through and do here. There's Lulu's. We'll drive right by Lulu's, I guess. That's Jimmy Buffett's sister's restaurant. Open air. Really good. Wait a couple hours, it's gonna be packed. What, almost 1.30 now. Flying Fish, pretty good restaurant there. River City Cafe, just to the left. Also pretty good. Decent cheesesteak. Alabama Theater is behind us. So this is like an open air mall area. Lots of shops you can walk through. You hear the scorpions playing in the background. They did take away the tiger exhibit that was here. That's gone. So right here on the right is Taco Mundo. We like Taco Mundo. Good Mexican restaurant. Did they have a locals discount? I think they did. So if you're from here, you have to remember when you go in to any of the restaurants, always ask, do you have a locals discount? About half of them do. Usually it's 10 or 15 percent, but better than saving zero percent. Okay, so that's Takamundo on the right, and then coming up on the right here is, well, here's Lulu's Beach Arcade on the right. Show that. So it's reminded, show it. Little beachy volleyball court, show this little thing you can climb up. You've done that. You can pay, what's it, like 15 bucks, I think, and you do that little course. Lulu's restaurant is here on the right. On the left is the Crooked Hammock Brewery. That's got a nice outside open air. It's been open about a year. So we're just kind of driving around the periphery of it. But look up other videos of Barefoot Landing. Lots to see and do. There's Greg Norman's place, Australian Grill, here on the right. Probably, a, you gotta keep it steady, you can't let it fall like that. Probably a lot of people protesting that over the whole live golf thing. The what then? Live golf, he was one of the people that started. First ones with that. Competitors to the PGA Tour. This is new, or it's new to my knowledge anyway. A Tesla supercharger station here. Now we just drove through here a couple weeks ago and I don't remember seeing it. Maybe they could put some chargers in for the rest of us. Talking to you again, Electrify America.
So we're going to go back out here to 17. Show over here a little bit. Walkways. There's another restaurant in here. It's the Pittsburgh. What's it called? It's like the Trattoria. It's really good. It's like family style eating. They bring out this bowl of beans. Man, these beans are so good. I'm not exactly sure what they do with these beans. Fantastic. Blueberries Grill right here. Absolutely incredible blueberries grill. Cracker Barrel across the street on the left. But if you're here in the area, I highly recommend going to Blueberries Grill for breakfast or lunch. We're going to turn out. Down here in the middle lane. Now we get into an area called Briarcliff. Briarcliff is this really little, I guess it's a town, between North Myrtle Beach where we're leaving and getting into Myrtle Beach down here. I think they have their own little police station, little tiny community. Um, so here's Middlegate Road on the left. That's part of Briarcliff. It's just quiet little housing development. Older, well more established housing development. So Briarcliff's a nice spot if you're looking for a home. Okay, so here again you can see we showed we're 22 when we crossed it on Route 31. I said how it comes in near the outlets, and that's what we're going to see now. Myrtle Beach Mall on the right. Not a whole lot really left in there, but Bass Pro Shop on the right. No. On the other side of those trees. We put in a new Chick-fil-A here. What else is here? I think there's a Hooters here for lunch. So on the left over here is Tanger Outlets. This is right where 22 dumps you right in. Hard to see on the other side of the hill, but we'll see it when we pass this overpass here in a second. Tanger Outlets. We have two, two locations for Tanger Outlets. There's the one here, which is where we normally come, and then there's another set of them on 501 up towards Conway. But what's in there? Under Armour's in there, North Face, what else, Disney, there's a food court, Michael Kors, Michael Kors might be in there, I don't know, there's a bunch of stuff. 
This is a golf course I played with Alex and his friends. We just passed that uh, last week. That was on the left. A couple Japanese restaurants here. Kado and the Yamis is up here somewhere. We'll find that in a second. Yabi's. Yabi's Japanese restaurant. This one, people rave about this location. Here on the left. There it is, somewhere over there. How you doing? What did it used to be called? Well, that one's always been Miyabi's. The one down by us, which is hot, was Hachia, and now it's Aquino's or Aquino's down by Merle's Inlet. Soho restaurant, steak, seafood, sushi on the right. That's supposed to be really good. Thoroughbreds restaurant on the left, also supposed to be fantastic. Chop house and seafood grill. Now we're getting into the land of the seafood buffets. Calabash Seafood Buffet, Giant Crab Seafood Buffet. These things, when they open in a couple hours, will be jam-packed. Benjamin's Calabash Seafood, big buffet. There's a raccoon. This uh, go-kart course, multi-level go-kart course here on the right. Mason's been there with Olivia, I remember that. So here we have a decision point. We're gonna stay on 17 South towards closer to the ocean. But you can do the, the bypass here on the right. It gets you out of some of the touristy traffic, you know, a little bit, out of the little bit of the stop and go, less red lights if you're just trying to get to, towards the south side. But that goes by Coastal Grand Mall, and you still got a lot that way. Just, you're a little, you're a couple, you're a little bit more off the beach. Myrtle Beach welcomes you. So here on the right we have the Carolina Opry and also the Pirates Voyage Dinner Show. I haven't been to the Pirates Voyage yet, but I've heard several people tell us it's good. Say that the food is actually better than they expected it to be. So I want to check out Pirates Voyage if you're looking for something to do with the family. Call ahead because that place, every, every parking spot is full when we drive by that a lot. The Dunes, private community up here. Higher priced community. You can see some of the oceanfront buildings there on the left. Grand Dunes on the right, community, and it looks like they're building quite a bit over here on the left. See this area of construction over here. There are areas of construction everywhere. What is this going up on the right? This is new. The new Bojangles. Sand Oak Dental Care. That's 
odd. I've seen so many dental places going up in the past year. I guess it's not odd. A lot of people moving in. That's a lot of new teeth. Service. Hook and Barrel restaurant on the left, also supposed to be good. Here's a, this is the only Greek place I know of, Taverna, that I, well, no, there is one further south. But Jennifer liked that one. We have been to that and she really liked it. So if you like Greek, Taverna right there. It's pretty good. And then a little bit further up, not much further, we're going to make a left and cut over towards the beach. Orange Theory Fitness. Right. Liberty Tap Room. I knew we had one. Well, that was that was a Carabas that's closed. Cane Patch Par 3 Golf to the right, the Par 3 course. Oh, on the left, show this, Mason. This is Fiesta Mexicana. If you like Mexican food, this is it. This is the best one we found right here on 17. It's got indoor seating and outdoor seating. Every time we've been there, it's been fantastic. Now this is Krabbas. The other one was Bonefish that just back a little couple blocks that closed. Okay. Cutting over too soon. We'll see. So, if you like this type of thing about Myrtle Beach, there are a couple other channels. There's one called Myrtle Beach Things. It was he was Mr. Myrtle, and then I think it was Myrtle Beach and Things, and now maybe now it's Myrtle Beach Things. It's changed it a couple times. I think that's what it is. He does a fantastic job. Goes to a lot of the places, shows you what's new, shows you what the changes are, does some historical comparisons. I really like his channel. Very good. So I recommend that. There's also another couple, Carmen and Brian, that do a great job showing things around Myrtle Beach. They post very regularly. So check them out as well. So what we're coming down to now, right here on Ocean Boulevard, some of these um, very expensive homes. There's the ocean right there, the big blue thing on the left. The window down. There are public beach accesses along this. So the houses on the right, this is what I, we believe, the houses on the right have access to the beach on the left. They have, these, they have a little sliver of property and a little teeny beach house thing on the left. So we think that they correspond. You get a house on the right, you get, also get the corresponding slice of property on the left that's beach. 
I believe that to be true. If that's not, or you, someone knows better, please correct me down in the comments. Show the big blue thing over here. Looks like a perfect beach day. Water looks clear, as clear as we get. curl in here a little bit before we continue south. We're going to make a left here onto North Ocean Boulevard. Here we go. So we are just parallel to 17, which is also known as North Kings Highway. That's just like one a block or two to our right. We're just parallel to that right next to the ocean. Please pay attention. Fifty second Avenue North, we're just crossing. See if we can show some of these homes here on the left and the right. Sydney likes this one on the right. It's a little bigger than we'll ever have. Show some of these on the left. Beautiful homes.
35th Avenue North, we are just crossing. One of these mokies or something, is that what this is called? It's a little blue thing. Moke. I think they sell those at the Ford dealer. Oh, show the sea captain's house on the left. We had the sea captain's house a couple weeks ago when my father was down. Really good. Highly recommend the sea captain's house. This road is messing the camera up. <clears throat> change it from wide to just one to the next one. Better image stabilization there. I can't change it while recording. Hmm? I can't change it while I'm recording. Okay. Tried to turn the image stabilization on a little better so it didn't bump as much because we do have some potholes in here, but it's really more just irregularities related to where the manhole covers are that create the bumps. And we didn't want you bumping up and down quite as much. This restaurant on the right, this Magnolia's, is awesome. We haven't been there, but I've heard good things about it. It's supposed to be good. <laughs> what is this? Looks like a wedding party over here on the left. Very nice. Slingshot. Yeah, slingshots. A lot of those are for rental down here. Yeah. A lot of rental slingshots, golf carts. So this is the downtown Myrtle Beach area. 24th Avenue North, we're just crossing. Pull your window up, there's nothing in any music. I want to be able to hear some of the natural sounds. Do you want to get demonetized? Are you still there? Thanks if you're still there. You're doing a great job. Thanks for watching. If you happen to find yourself in this video by chance, let me know in the comments. That happens sometimes. I always enjoy that. <laughs> so this little strip of road also, this is where when we have different theme weeks You'll get people kind of cruising up and down the boulevard, I guess, would be the closest thing to that. Showing off their cars, driving up and down where we are right now, here down through the area past Ripley's and the volleyball courts. So when we get squatted truck week, if you own a squatted truck where the back is lower than the front, 
I guarantee you we'll see one here in the next minute. Why? I see the squatted trucks and it just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm getting old. Where the front is a lot higher than the back. Now South Carolina has a law. I believe the law is four, the front cannot be more than four inches higher than the back. But we'll probably see one here. We may have already passed one. You may have already noticed one in the video and I missed it. But the last two years we've seen less and less, I guess, because, I think because of that law. But a few weeks ago, I think we had a squatted truck rally because they were everywhere. So open lot and there's the ocean. Southbound traffic only Friday and Saturday. 4 p.m. until 2 a.m. I wonder what they're doing. So this is new on the right, this little one square block amusement park. Funplex. That's located here at 15th Avenue North. Look at that thing. It's pretty cool. That just started last year. Little starter amusement park. Bicycle police. Always a very heavy police presence down here. Make sure everybody's safe. I think it was two summers ago we had someone got shot from a golf cart or something down here. I don't remember the details, but they have little spurts of violence down here occasionally. It can be a little sketchy at night sometimes, I think, but they do have a lot of police down here. I know, I know the city is really trying to keep this clean and safe down here. So coming up on the left is Riptide's Oceanfront Grill and Rooftop Bar. You can see that on the left. Now, we tried to go there. Well, we didn't try. We actually succeeded. We went there about a month or so ago. But they have a rule that I really do not like. You have to give them your credit card before you order the food and they hold it the entire time and they run like some type of hold amount on it. I guess to make sure that people aren't skipping out on their bills. I just don't like that. I'm not gonna do that. So we didn't do that. We left. We went ate somewhere else. So I don't know. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments. Is that a po I've never seen a policy like that anywhere else where you have to turn in give them your credit card and they hold it on file. I, I, you know, I've been a victim of identity theft before. I'm just never going to do that. Maybe maybe I'm that guy. I don't know. But I asked them, I said, do you have a lot of people that leave because of this? And she said, yes, some. Just, I didn't like it. So here's the sky wheel on the left, on the right. Can you show that, Mason? It's the big, uh, what do they call this thing? Slingshot. Uh, that's, that's what I thought, but it's not. A, uh, it's not called a slingshot. It's called something else. Airstrike, it looks like. Maybe is that what it's called? 
free fall thrill park. So we got the sky wheel right here on the left, and that's attached to Jimmy Buffett's Land Shark Bar and Grill. Also a pretty good little spot. Got some oceanfront seating, indoor and outdoor. On the other side of this Cisco truck on the left. They're allowed to advertise that? What? Selling edibles. Did you see that? In the window, they're advertising selling edibles. I didn't know you could advertise that. I guess so. That's illegal here? So this is the intersection with Mr. Joe White Avenue, with this, with this dead end here. Show this Plyler Park here, Mason, on the left. So Mr. Joe White Avenue comes right down here. That ends into here, a little tiny park, and then it joins the boardwalk. There's a little boardwalk that goes from a little north of where we are and goes south past this area and past the volleyball courts and another, I don't know, maybe half mile or so, I'm guesstimating, south of that. It's not very big, but they are they did just redo it. They've been redoing it the last year, updating the wood on the boardwalk making it a little bit, trying to make it a little bit nicer, so I do appreciate that. Coming soon, Ripley's Illusion Lab on the right. Something crazy is on its way, it says. I'm not sure how much of this peripheral stuff you can see through the camera. So, but also up here on the right is the Ripley's Believe It or Not. On the left, this is you know, Peach's Corner and Fun Plaza, which is an arcade. And just past the Peach's Corner here on the left, are the sand beach volleyball courts. Now you can pull those up on Earth Cam. There's a camera that sits on top of one of the restaurants. What's it called? The Ocean Grill, which is on the back corner. I think that's what it is, the Ocean Grill. They have a pretty good steam shrimp platter. I would sit here the last two years and watch Mason practice because he was doing beach volleyball practice with Grand Strand Sand, which I really liked, but he didn't want to do that this year. He's doing indoor volleyball. But I thought it was great. Come out here and he could do practice and I would just walk laps around the volley around the volleyball court and on the beach. This is also where the CCMF, the Carolina Country Music Festival, will be set up. Stage is essentially right here on the left. And all the people will be out here on the right. And this is where the pavilion arcade with all the rides used to be. This is where CCMF will be. I'll be working on Sunday at the Tidelands Health Tent. So we can talk about golf carts. I believe, I believe, the law with the golf carts is they can only be on roads that have 35 mile per hour or slower speed limit, 35. They have to be driven by a licensed driver and have to have a license plate on it. Now what you will see, the majority of what's down here does not comply to that. You'll see teenage kids that clearly do not have a license driving these things where they should not be. You'll see families that have these golf carts completely overpacked. I think we get a fair amount of people that come down here on vacation and think that the normal rules of physics and safety do not apply to them. Because we get accidents from these golf carts every year where people are, too many people are on them, they're on a road that they're not meant to be on, they're being operated unsafe. So if you're gonna come down here and rent a golf cart, 
please follow the rules with those, the road rules with those, the laws, and be safe about them. We don't want anybody getting hurt. We hit, you, know, you hear these stories where kids get knocked out of them because they run a golf cart and they got hit by a car and kids got thrown out. You know, we don't want that to happen. Anyway, that's my soapbox about the golf carts. Just be careful. We're getting down into this area where we got some newer hotels mixed in with a lot of older hotels. And the city is trying to take down a lot of the older ho hotels that aren't in good shape and reuse that space, update that space, put in something that's a little bit nicer and cleaner than some of what currently occupies some of these areas. So if you're going to get a hotel down here on the south side of the Myrtle Beach downtown area, do your research. Be careful what you pick. I'll try to name a few that I think look nice from here as we're driving. This is nice too. I like this. Second Avenue Pier, this Wicked Tuna. Mason, show this on the left. It's not nearly as big as it looks. There's a little gift shopping thing in there. You can access the pier beyond that, but there is a Wicked Tuna restaurant on there. And we went there and I liked it. It was really good. Sorry for the camera shaking up and down. We're apparently having some difficulty with that. Boardwalk still goes down here. You can see it to the left. So this, what is it? Ocean's One. This looks like a nice rest, not restaurant, nice hotel. This is relatively newer. Ocean's One Resort. Now we're on 2nd Avenue South. So the street names changed back there a little bit. Now we go back in ascending order as we move south. helmet so on the left here there was a water park here if I mention it show there was a water park here on the left that got taken down over the last year and I'm not sure what they're gonna put there Myrtle Beach things probably knows I need to go back and watch his videos I'm sure he'll tell us as he keeps up on what they're doing and on the right is this amusement park family kingdom and the water park was associated with family kingdom i believe is how it worked but now they've taken it down so we'll see what they do i'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the space please try again we only have 20 percent left 20% battery. We'll be alright. actually going this way we're gonna miss Broadway at the beach so go back and watch one of the other videos on the channel about Broadway at the beach hopefully I can get the one from last weekend when we did the March of Dimes walk and did an extended walk around after that hopefully I can get that posted just I filed a dispute because of the Eagles song that was playing in the background We'll see how that turns out. I'll probably lose that, and I'll just have to silence that part of the video. You can just mute that part where their song was playing, but I just I think that's silly. You just shouldn't have to do that.
was a parasailer out there over the ocean. Do some parasailing. 17th Avenue South. Again, the numbers now go in ascending. Before we got to the downtown area, they were descending order, you know, going south. Now they're more. Now they're ascending again. We're not too far away from where the Chinese spy balloon was shot down. I was at a recruiting event for my company and we looked up and saw the spy balloon go over us. I didn't know that's what it was at first. Somebody said, there's the Chinese spy balloon. I thought they were kidding and that's actually what it was. And then we finished that event and Mason had just come from basketball. So he just had his basketball shorts on. So we stopped and Jennifer ran into, I think it was a TJ Maxx, to buy him some sweatpants. And I was looking up right through, looking up right through the sunroof here in this truck and watched, saw the balloon right over the truck and two jets fly on either side of it. And then right before she walked out of TJ Maxx, uh, there was one, I saw one more coming and I pulled around to get in a different spot in the parking lot and heard this huge thunderous cannon type shot and looked up just in time, and that was the plane firing the missile. And saw the missile, I didn't see the actual missile, you could see the trail of it for a little bit, but then saw the balloon explode into air. You saw this kind of puff from the top of the balloon, and then as it shrunk down, it was no longer spherical. It looked like a pop balloon, and it started to come down. But that was right near where we are. So that was a big thing here in the Myrtle Beach area, watching the Chinese spy balloon get shot down. Some people could hear it. I heard it. It was very loud. If you were a little further south. <coughs> Sorry, a little further south, like by Surfside, you did, people did not hear the shot. I heard it. I thought it was loud. Sun and Sand Resort. Focus on what you're doing. I need a nap, dude. Hmm? I need a nap. Focus on what you're doing. I'm trying You need to... a nap. You slept until after 10 a.m. I need more sleep. I called you after 10 a.m. and said we're going to leave at 11. There's one of the red birds of Myrtle Beach up in the sky. Can you show that, Mason? Uh, it's on all no. the helicopters. $20 helicopter rental tour. I want to do that. Maybe that'll be coming up. Just to record it for here, for the channel. Holiday Inn Club Vacations here on the right. A little <sighs> short golf course over here. It's called Arrow Park, I think. The Arrow Club short course. All right, so decision point. We're gonna make a left on 17. We could go straight and we'd go through Market Common. Market Common's largely a residential area. There is a open air shopping and restaurant district as well, but we're gonna go left. Where does left take us? South. Two. We're gonna go down by Merle's Inlet, go down through Suck bang and blow area and the beaver bars where a lot of the bikers are going to be and we can show that since we saw the north end We'll show that on the south end here as well So also right here right near this so the the airport is just to the right of that intersection market common was straight We made the left and right here on the left is going to be Myrtle Beach State Park To the left Looks like a bunch of trees right now, but up here there's an entrance to Myrtle Beach State Park. Fantastic park. You can buy a pass. It looks something that looks like this. So that pass will get you into Myrtle Beach State Park and Huntington Beach State Park. 
all year for a hundred bucks into any of any of the state parks in South Carolina. So you can use it at any of them. Those are the ones we use it at, which is really nice. We go to Huntington Beach State Park a lot, which is a little further south of here, but Myrtle Beach State Park is here. They do have covered pavilions, not really gazebo because they're bigger than that. Pavilions you can rent out or use for lunch and you know, there are bath houses. You can use the restroom while you're out on the beach. There's a, a pier you can go out on which is very nice. So Myrtle Beach State Park is a good spot. I recommend that. What's in here? Big Air Trampoline Park, Glenmark Center Shopping Center just to our right. Yeah, a lot of the local kids will go to Big Air Trampoline Park parties and such. State Park, next left, right here. Entrance to it. it. Really is very nice. Lots of trees. We've tried to keep a lot of the cut down as few trees as possible to make the park. So I like There's the other Harley Davidson store on the right here, but typically they oh they didn't. There's a lot of bikes here. They do have events here. Typically, they move a lot of the bikes that are for sale to the north end, the first Harley-Davidson shop that we sold. Pirate Land, this is first of the really big campgrounds here on the left. Pirate Lane. This is pulled right out in front of me. This appears to be a rental. the people on the bike path. There's a long bike path down here, which is really good. Okay, so here we are. On the right, there's a the green Walmart, not the blue one, the big blue one. These are the green sign Walmarts, and they're the neighborhood neighborhood markets. So they're a little smaller. They ha they have groceries and stuff you would need if you were here on vacation, but not all the big Walmart super center stuff. So, it's actually, the sign was back there, but it's actually up here on the right. We'll see it. This is right at the intersection of 544 in Route 17. Ocean Lakes Village. Pretty big interchange here, 17 and 544 on the left. We have another, we have more campgroundy type area on the left. And this, 544 here, this is, what is this, Ocean Lakes. 544 on the right, coming into here, we'll just back up on Saturdays with RVs just coming straight across, right into Ocean Lakes here, and then making a left for Pirate Land. There's another one, I think, further to the right, to the south. So it's like Campground Central. It's, it's nice. They have little water parks in there. They're their own little kind of condensed community. They're not little, though. They're big. They're huge. This 
So this is the intersection of 544 and Route 17. We can make a right here and go towards up towards Conway. But we're gonna go straight and it's gonna take us to Surfside Beach. Focus on what you're doing, sit up. Mason's struggling over here. He didn't get enough sleep and he's getting tired holding the camera out. So everybody bear with him a little bit. He's doing his best. <laughs> Looks like he's about to fall asleep. Get it together, man. Bikers hitting the beach today. Slow down and drive safe. Speed and noise laws forced. Surfside doesn't like, they do have noise laws. They also don't like fireworks on the beach, I believe, is one of the rules, one of the laws here at Surfside. So on the right here, we have Johnny D's Waffles. That's a good place for breakfast. There was another one further north. They have a couple of locations. The guy that started it, I believe, Johnny passed away last year, but it's a nice restaurant. Johnny D's on the right. On the left, we have another barbecue house, Mason. There's the other barbecue house. There it is, it looks like that. How you doing? Dagwood's up here on the right. Sports bar. The food there's pretty good. It's kind of dark, not a lot of light, but I remember being in there, but food was good. Batting cages on the left. So what we are going to do is make a left up here. Go down towards Surfside Pier, make a right, go down in the Garden City, past Con Cafe, go down in the Garden City, and then come back out, make a little horseshoe and come back out onto this road. So this is the intersection with Glens Bay Road on the left and on the right it's Surfside Drive. Surf Surfside Drive changes names four times. Here on the left it's Surfside. On the right it's Glens Bay Road. Then you go up another segment to just past where it inter interchanges with uh, 17 Bypass and it becomes what's up there? Homestown Road then it turns into Timberlake. So, same road, four names within the span of three and a half miles or so. You're at 10%. Okay. Where, where are we going? I just heard Con Cafe. We're gonna go down here to by the pier and make a left, go past Con Cafe, and then make the, go to Garden City, make the right, and come back out, and then we'll go down and drive through Merle's Inlet, and then we'll probably probably be done at that point. I don't know how long you think 10% is going to last you. Well, when it stops, we'll plug it in and we'll unplug the, we'll unplug the external microphone and see how we do. Eternal Wave Surf Shop on the right. So lots of good little restaurants right here in this one box. This Wooden Spoon Eatery. Good. There's what, Malibu Italian restaurant up here on the right that's really good. Malibu of Surfside. They usually have a wait. So if you want to try to eat at this Malibu of Sur Surfside or Borgata next to it, you got to call and make reservations. Now behind them, you can't see it from here, but the block directly behind this on the right is Benjamin's Bakery. Benjamin's ba Bakery, really good. Well, there it is. There's the back side of it. Really good. Weekend morning, we'll go there. You get a little... Bacon, egg, and cheese, something, sandwich, or they have fresh made bagels and sandwiches and stuff. But they'll have a little bit of line in the morning, but it's a little family owned restaurant, been there a long time, and it's always good, and the people are always nice. Check out Benjamin's Bakery.
We are running the battery down today. They did a barbecue, Surfside Barbecue Festival a few weeks ago here. They have bands that play and set up some picnic tables right out here. I'm going to back off away from this trailer. So we can see a little bit better. So we're dead ending. This is Surfside Drive now. Dead ending right towards the ocean onto Ocean Boulevard. So you can see the big crane directly ahead of us. This is where they're updating Surfside Beach Fishing Pier. Straight ahead there in the white. They've been working on this for a couple years now. The previous pier was damaged by a hurricane, so it's taken them a while to update. Some stop sign. It just blew right through the stop sign. So here we go. Pizza Hyena on the left. Gracious Pig is new on the right. Chimichama Llama here on the right, also new. All three of those restaurants owned by the same person. Let these guys go. Bubba's Fish Shack on the right, that's been there for a while, and just past that is Neil and Pam's. Neil and Pam's burned down. Come on out. Neil and Pam's burned down last year and just reopened a few weeks ago, and it's been packed every day since it's reopened. So this is Neil and Pam's here on the right. You can sit inside or you can sit outside on this little deck and it faces, if you turn towards the left here, Mason faces the big blue thing, the Atlantic Ocean over there on the left. So all of these homes, these are all rentals here on the left that are ocean front. So this is going from Surfside Beach where we are and free parking once we get down to Garden City Beach. So Surfside, you have to pay to park. When you get into Garden City, you don't. There's free. There's free parking. So we go down a little bit further, and it's always people walking and riding their bikes up and down here. This is all all rental stuff, right off right off the beach. Plenty of beach accesses on the left with parking, some with parking, some without parking. Not nap time. Mason has found a way to pry the phone up on the little tripod on the dashboard. We're going to take a quick stop down here, one of the parking areas, show you what the beach looks like, and then we'll get in and finish up. Get back in and finish up. 11th Avenue South again. Road names changed again. We got the surf side. Is that even aimed relatively straight? No, it's following. It was. Hold it up. noise the microphone's right there just hold it it's good there I'm watching maintain it it's bouncing around too much hold it in your hand it's not bouncing around it's vibrating it was a lot worse so right here on the left is the con cafe great little spot sit outside they have a they have a porch. Sorry about that, it fell down. Con Cafe has a porch you can sit outside and eat. They also have inside seating and they just opened, you can see that little ramp right there. It's new wood, but just to the right of that, they just opened a couple days ago a little bar that's underneath. So I'm not sure if it's just drinks or if they have food under there, but that's new as of this week and you can't smell it but I can it smells incredible 
Hotel, Conk Cafe. We like the Conk Cafe. Can you just hold it, please? There's one I wanted it shaking on the back. Before you aggravate me. We're going to pull in here at Calhoun Drive, public access number 14, and see if we can find a spot to park for just a couple minutes. This is free parking, because it says free parking. Oh, uh, it's a golf cart now. It's just, you can see the green spots. Maybe we're not going to get out here. We're jammed up tight. Can't park right here. That's not going to work out for us. Where are you going now? Left, south. Why are we going south? Or that's the way we. That's the way we've been going. If the microphone picks up the whining, the up and down of the, mic of the uh, electric motors. Let's try again here. Motorcycle guys. Alabama license plate. Anybody coming that way? No, I don't know. I can't see past the van. Tents, no bikes, no e-bikes on the beach. <coughs> so there's Easy Street we just passed. We're striking out on the free beach parking. I need it for like five minutes. So we just park. This is one where I use 
hopefully get lucky. Let's see. But not today, unless she's right getting in her car and leaving. Three. Hmm. You're out. Is she leaving? No. Yep. No. How do you know she's not leaving? No. I, I just know I'm telepathic. You don't know. Yes, I do. You don't know. Yes, I do. A little Jeep there. You're not leaving. So it's been a minute, hasn't it? We've been doing this drive. So it's got to be well over an hour. Oh, she jammed yes! us up. She jammed us up. Getting her stuff out of there. Okay, hold the camera so it doesn't fall. It's strike three. You're out. There are no strikes. No, you, you said you're going to strike out. That was the... No. Maybe we'll try one. There's no fourth strike. Mm -hmm. There's no fourth strike. Depends on the rules. Just turn and show the place mom talks about. Whatever this place is called. How much battery do we have left? Um, nine. Alright, so... We could go straight down to Garden City, but we're going to make a right instead. Garden City, it's just, it's a long peninsula. There's ocean on the left, and there's the inlet water on the right. It's, at times it's only one road wide, sometimes it's two. But we're going to make a right here, and then we'll go back out to 17, we'll make a left, and we'll go through Merle's Inlet down past Bike Week and the Marsh Walk area of restaurants and all there, and then we'll be done. Mason, I'm going to need you to hold the phone again while we start to move. We get a high tide or a king tide. <clears throat> king tide is like the biggest of the high tide. The water will overrun this road here. village I think it's surf shop up here on the right it's been here I think 52 years if I remember the sign correctly we'll see in a second that's what it said last time I drove by it I didn't say it. Oh, there it is since 1969 is that where we bought Sydney surfboard yeah. I think it is yeah. isn't it Angela's Fresh Market on the left, local shrimp, hot dogs, hot boiled peanuts. So to the right of this, we're, well, we're coming back into 17 here, intersection. Just to the right of this, there's a 
old Chicago pizza place. Kind of like a Uno's, I guess, deep dish Chicago pizza. It's a log cabin, it's a camp something, pancake house. There's a Pelican snowball stand right there, and we do like that. Kroger, it's Kroger grocery store on the left, Sharon Jensen Drive on the right, South Jensen Drive, Gilligan's Island, Funland Golf uh, on the left. So what you will see up here, slightly on the left, there's Stella's ice cream that opened a year or so ago. There was some drama with that, and I guess she had worked for Painter's Ice Cream. I don't remember exactly what happened, but there was some legal trouble between the two, but she's got her own place, Stella's Ice Cream. It's pretty good here on the left, just past that, Texas Roadhouse. That Texas Roadhouse could be easily two or three times its current size and still be on a wait. It, frequently the wait is 60, 90 minutes or longer. People sit there and wait. They come to Texas Roadhouse, they know what it is. It's consistent, they know what to expect. And that Texas Roadhouse is constantly busy. Look at it now. People in overflow parking now. It's 2.40 p.m. on Saturday. So it's just going to get busier. So we are, this is kind of Garden City. We're going to make a left here. It's really the transition into Merle's Inlet. Up here on the right is a new restaurant. People from Maryland came down and started it. It's called the Hippie Hen House. Where is it? It's over uh, just past Fridays. Kind of see it there on the right, Hippie Head House. We love the Hippie Head House. I do. They had the best, Jennifer got a crab cake there. It's the best crab cake of anywhere down here. We've gotten other shrimp and crab things. They have a crab pretzel, Maryland style crab pretzel. Fantastic. So, Maryland style food here at the Hippie Head House. I think they're, they were closed on Mondays. I'm not sure if they still are. But anyway, it's right there on the right. Highly recommend you check out the Hippie Head House. You were the only one who liked what you got there. We've been there several times since then. It's been good. What do we have? Mellow, another mellow mushroom on the right. Here we go, Merle's Inlet. So, on the left here, we will see Suck, Bang, and Blow restaurant. I've heard multiple stories of the origin of that name. Let me see.
So this is this is the epicenter of Bike Week. See how many police cars you can count down here during this. There's one, two over there. They have a stage in the back. They'll typically have bands that play back there as well. It's new, Serendipity Sweet Shop. Or to me it's new, I don't remember it. Back home, country barbecue on the left. I mean, on the right. <laughs> I think at some point I'd be able to figure out my left from my right. And then here we start getting into the the Marsh Walk restaurants just south of this. So we have actually changed counties now too. We've moved from Horry County into Georgetown County. All right, so here we go. Let's talk about the Marsh Walk. We have Bovine's wood-fired specialties. That is a Ferrari. Pretty. So that's the first one. Then Wahoo's Fish House. Man, smell that. Mm, it smells good. Wahoo's Fish House is great. They also have live music that plays right there on that little deck. What else is out here? Drunken Jack's. Drunken Jack's is good food. So you can see, 
it's Saturday afternoon. It's, it's already full. It's about full with parking, and it will continue to be so. Is this Gentleman Crossing? No. J. Peters, Bubba's Love Shack. These are all right on this little... The Marsh Walk is a little boardwalk that's out there. And there's other videos on the channel of that. You can see that. And on the right, Express. Express Water Sports. You can rent you know, boats and jet skis and pontoon boats and such for rental and take out here on the marsh. Creek Rats. That's where I was talking about. We ate lunch a couple years ago, day after Christmas. 72 degrees and sat outside. Dead, dead Dog Saloon. Weird name, but there are pictures in the inside of everybody's dead pets. So you bring in a picture of your dog that's passed away and they'll put it up on the wall. Claw House Restaurant. Wicked Tuna. You don't have your blinker on, sir. Are you turning? You should use your blinker. This was Mojo's, like Mojitos, it was Mojo's. Now it's called, now open, Neptune Bistro and Raw Bar. So that just changed in the last few weeks, I believe. Georgetown Sheriff getting ready for bike week. So this is, it's spelled B-E-L-I-N, like Belin, but apparently it's pronounced Blaine um, Church. And they always have lots of activities. And out back there's a, a wooden cross that they decorate for Easter and things like that. And that'll frequently show up in Instagram pictures from down here, you'll see that wooden cross. Another River City Cafe, River City Cafe on the left. Lee's Inlet Kitchen. Eh. Eh. There's signs voted best seafood. I don't know. Eh. Costa or Costa. I say Costa. Little restaurant up here on the right. Small inside, but man, is it good. So that's this right here, Costa, very good. Judy Boone's, this is Family Traditions Kitchen, it says. That's a buffet. You know, fried shrimp and stuff like that on the buffet. We're coming to the end. Couple more restaurants down here. Nance's, the Inlet Provision Company. We like the Inlet Provision Company. That was good. Hot Fish Club, fantastic. They have a lobster pot pie. I think it has like lobster and shrimp and scallops. It's got a couple things in it. Pot pie, there it is, looks like that. The Hot Fish Club opens at four. You should go. I believe the Hot Fish Club is one of the older restaurants down here. And we're gonna end here in just a minute thinking about going a little further south to Litchfield or Pawleys Island but we'll do that on another video I do have a video from Pawleys Island a few years ago on here so you can scroll back and see that I think it was the 4th of July one year we went but we'll do that as a separate video this one's already long enough Graham's Landing I believe is the last restaurant down here
A lot of people really love Graham's Landing. See on the left is a this is a little trail you can get on. See it? And that'll take you down, goes through the woods down here on the left. Look how pretty that is. The trail goes through the woods on the left and all the way down to Litchfield. And there we go. That's it. That's your tour today. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Is it off? It won't end. Okay, so to button this up, let's finish the range test discussion. When we started, we had 200... 54 miles of range. I just calculated it. We used 74 miles of range, miles of estimated range, and we actually drove 80.3 miles. So today we did better. We got more miles out of it than what it estimated we would get for that amount for what we actually drove. Last week when we went to Columbia, we were driving faster. We were in the upper 70s sometimes for on the faster roads and so I'm guessing the higher speeds just really killed our range last week. But today, this is better. We outperformed the estimated range by six miles or so. So that's better. But we're back home. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.